Hey everyone, don't you know that traffic flow in a network can be modeled by systems of linear equations? In this video, we are going to look at the applications of systems of linear equations in network analysis. Let's say we have this situation. The flow of traffic through a network of streets is shown below. You have these four streets that are all one-way streets. And there are four intersections corresponding to the nodes of the network. Let's say that from the north side of this road going to intersection A, the flow of traffic is 350 cars per hour. And coming from the west, the flow of traffic to intersection A is 125 cars per hour. Those cars can proceed to intersection B or intersection D. And let's say that the flow of traffic is at the rate of X of 1 going to intersection B and X of 4 going to intersection D. Now coming from the east going to intersection C, the flow of traffic is 800 cars per hour. And coming from the south going to intersection C, the flow of traffic is 250 cars per hour. Those cars can either go to intersection B or intersection D. Let's say the flow of traffic to intersection B from intersection C is X sub 2 cars per hour, and those cars coming from intersections A and C can flow to two opposite directions, one going to the east at 400 cars per hour, and the other is going north at 255 cars per hour. Then finally, part of those cars that entered intersection C will flow to intersection D at the rate of X of 3 cars per hour, and all of those cars coming into intersection D can exit in two ways, one going west at 300 cars per hour, and the other is going south at 600 cars per hour. Now the question is, find the values of X of 1, X of 2, X of 3, and X of 4 in order to balance the traffic flow, and number two, Let's say there is construction happening between intersection A and D, and we close this road, meaning the value of X of 4 is 0. What would be the effect of that on the flow of traffic to the other three intersections? And number three, find the flow of traffic if we limit the number of cars that can enter the road AD to a rate of 100 cars per hour. You can pause the video and see if you can solve this traffic flow problem. Now, let's solve this problem together. There are five ideas that I would like to discuss first regarding traffic network. First is, a traffic network can be described by directed networks as shown in this figure. Number two, intersections correspond to the nodes of the network. In here, we have four nodes, A, B, C, and D. Number three, the roads correspond to the directed edges or branch of the network. Traffic flows along the branches, as you can see in these arrows. And number four, this is very important, assume all traffic entering an intersection must leave the intersection. And at each node, the flow in is equal to the flow out. And number five, assume that the total traffic entering the network equals the total traffic leaving the network. So based on this property number four of a traffic network, we can now form equations. Let's construct a table first. We have here the four nodes A, B, C, and D, and we are going to record the flow in and the flow out of traffic. And we are going to form the equation based on the concept that at each node, the flow in is equal to the flow out. So here is node A. The flow in would be the sum of this 350 and 125. So we have 125 plus 350. And the flow out would be this x sub 1 and this x sub 4. So we have x sub 1 plus x sub 4. And for the equation, we equate the flow in and the flow out. So we have x sub 1 plus x sub 4, which is the flow out, equals the sum of 125 plus 350 equals 475, which is the flow of traffic into the node. The same explanation for node B. The flow in would be x sub 1 and x sub 2. The flow out would be the sum of 255 and 400. And the equation is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 equals 625, which is the sum of 225 plus 400. Now for node C, the flow in would be the sum of 800 and 250. And the flow out would be the sum of x sub 2 and x sub 3. And the equation is, we equate these two expressions. And for node D, flow in would be x sub 4 plus x sub 3. Flow out would be 300 plus 600. 
and equate these two to arrive at x sub 3 plus x sub 4 equals 900. We now have here four equations in four unknowns, and these are the four equations, one corresponding for each of the four nodes. And this is the system of equation that we are going to solve in order to find the values of x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4. So let's solve this problem simultaneously, first by lining up the same variables. So we have x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4 all lined up. This is a system of linear equations in four unknowns and four equations. So to solve this, we can use matrices. In particular, we are going to use the Gauss-Jordan reduction. So let's convert this into this augmented matrix. The coefficients of the variables are 1, 0, 0, 1 for the first equation that gives us the first row, and at the right side we have 475. This bar corresponds to this equality sign. Then you have here 1, 1, 0 for x3, 0 for x4, so we have this row. The right side is 625. And the third row is 0, 1, 1, 0. The right side is 1050, and the fourth row is 0, 0, 1, 1, 900. When using this matrix in order to solve for the values of the variables, we want this downward diagonal to be all ones, and we have no problem because they are all ones, and we want all the coefficients below this downward diagonal to become zero. That means we want all of these ones here to become zero, and these zeros to remain zero. So when we can make all these coefficients in the triangle below the downward diagonal to be all zeros, then we'll be able to find the values of the variables. And the way to do that is to use what we call as the elementary row operations, so that we can convert this into the row echelon form. And these three elementary operations on this matrix are the following. We can swap rows, we can multiply a row by a non-zero number, or we can add a multiple of one row to another. Subtraction is covered here because subtraction is adding the additive inverse. So let's now convert this matrix into its row echelon form by performing any of these elementary row operations. Our goal, therefore, is we want now to make this one to become zero. And how can we make this one equal zero? As we have said, we can perform any of this. Either we can swap, or we can multiply, or we can add. But notice that if I subtract row number two minus row number one, that is, I subtract one minus one, the result would be zero, and therefore we can make this equal to zero by subtraction. So this is what we are going to do now. Take row number two, subtract from it the entries in row number one, and replace the entries in row number two by whatever is the difference. So we take this difference and we replace row number two by the difference. So what's the entries of row number two? These are all the entries in row number two and these are the entries in row number one. We subtract these two rows column by column. So one minus one is zero, one minus zero is one, 0 minus 0 is 0, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 625 minus 475 is 150. So this is now the difference that we are going to use to replace the entries in row number 2. So this row number 2 becomes now 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 150. So let's replace it now. We just replace row number 2 by this difference. So we now have 0 here. The next goal is to make this be equal to zero. And how can we make that equal to zero? This is what we are going to do. We take row number four and we swap that with row number three. So by swapping these two, by swapping all of these entries, then we will be able to have an entry here of zero, zero, one, zero, which will make this highlighted one be equal to zero because our goal is to make this entries in the lower triangle of this matrix to be all equal to zero. So let's do the swapping. Notice now that this row number three becomes row number four, and this row number four becomes row number three. We swap the two rows. And notice now that we have zero, 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 one, one. So there are two more ones here that we would like to make zeros. Let's proceed to performing the same algorithm. We want this one to become zero. And we can achieve that by subtracting this second row minus the fourth row. And the result is used to replace the entries in row number four. Let's carry that out. These are the entries in row number two. And these are the entries in row number four. Perform the subtraction and this is the result. And use this to replace row number four. Notice that this one 
will become zero. So let's do that. So this part here now is zero. There is one problem left here, this negative one. And we perform the same algorithm. So to make this zero, we can add row number three plus row number four because one plus negative one will result to zero and replace the fourth row by the sum. So take the entries of row number three and row number four and perform the addition column by column. These are the results. We have zero, 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 zero. So replace row number four by all zeros. And we now have this result. This is now in the row echelon form. We have the downward diagonal to be all ones or zero and the entries in the bottom triangle are all zeros. Now this is a special case because the last row contain all zeros. What does that mean? The entries in the first column are coefficients of x sub 1, for the second, for x sub 2, for the third, for x sub 3, and for the fourth, x sub 4. So if we convert this to an equation, this means that the first row is 1x sub 1 plus 1x sub 4 equals 475. For the second row, this means that x sub 1 is 0, but x sub 2 is 1. So 1x sub 2 minus 1x sub 4 equals 150. The third row says that 1x sub 3 plus 1x sub 4 equals 900. And the fourth row says that x sub 4 is a free variable because the 0 here corresponds to x of 4, and this is 0. And all the other entries are zeros, meaning you can replace x of 4 by any number subject to the implied conditions here. And what is that implied condition? That implied condition is the number of cars that are entering each of these nodes or intersection cannot be negative because you cannot have negative number of cars. And so based on that assumption, we can now determine what are the possible values for x of 4 based on these equations. Notice that if x of 1 plus x of 4 equals 475, that is equivalent to x of 1 is equal to 475 minus x of 4. The same for the second and the third equations. X sub 4 here would always be that other variable that we need in order to find x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. Based from these equations, since x sub 1, the flow of traffic here, cannot be negative, then x sub 4 cannot be more than 475 because that will make x sub 1 negative. And therefore, one restriction for x sub 4 is x sub 4 must be less than or equal to 475. Next, from the second equation, since x sub 2 must be positive and that is equal to 150 plus x sub 4, that means that x sub 4 must be greater than negative 150. Because if x sub 4 is negative 150 or less, then x sub 2 would become negative. But we know that x sub 4 must be positive. So we can rewrite this instead as saying x sub 4 must be greater than or equal to 0. And then for the third one, x sub 4 must be less than 900. But we cannot take all those values unless they are also less than 475. Otherwise, that will make x sub 1 negative. So in effect, these are the only two restrictions for x sub 4. And we can now write this as one continuous inequality as x sub 4 must be between 0 and 475. And this result in this restriction is now our answer for question number one. These are the values of x of 1, x of 2, x of 3, which are still based on the values of x of 4, which has these restrictions. Any value of x of 4 that belongs to this domain, substituted here, will give you a valid value for x of 1, x of 2, and x of 3. But let's answer number two. Find the traffic flow when x of 4 equals 0. What does it mean to have zero traffic flow at x sub 4? This means that we close the traffic to this road AD. Probably there's a construction or there's temporary closing because of accidents. And by closing this road, that will increase the volume of traffic going to point D and that will also lessen the volume of traffic entering intersection D. And so what's the total effect on the traffic network? We cannot compute. So x sub 4 is 0, then x sub 1 would be 475 minus 0, which is 475, x sub 2 becomes 150, and x sub 3 becomes 900. All of this will balance the traffic flow in the network. Now what happens if we limit the number of cars entering this road? That means x sub 4 is equal to 100. So if x sub 4 is 100, this is now the resulting values. x sub 1 would decrease to 375. x sub 2 would increase by 100 
to become 250 and X sub 3 would decrease by 100 to become 800. So the effect was there is a decrease in X sub 1 because some cars are routing to intersection D because there are more cars coming to intersection D some traffic, instead of going directly to D from C, might decide to route to intersection B and there's an increase of 250 to balance the traffic flow. Otherwise, there would be congestion here. And that will result to a decrease of flow in traffic to intersection D by 100 in order to balance the traffic. So this is how we use mathematics in the real world. So thank you very much. This problem is now solved.